This video has been quite a long time coming and I am so excited that today is finally the day that I get to show you my craft room. Now I have never had a craft room before until we moved into this house back in August. So I've spent a ton of time organizing, decluttering, and figuring out systems that will help me work smarter, not harder, so I can spend more time crafting and less time hunting for the items that I actually need. So come along with me. I'm gonna share a ton of tips and tricks, whether you have a dedicated craft space or not, that will give you more time back to do what you love and that's creating. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge hello to my whiskey craft buddies who come back each week to DIY with me. If you're not already a craft buddy, no worries. Just hit subscribe down below so you won't miss any future DIY or budget home decor content. I was so very excited that this house had extra space and extra bedrooms, so I was able to not be in a basement, have a really nice huge window with natural light that you can see here, and really have a space that I could make my own. This was previously a bedroom when we moved in, so it has a nice closet space, but I had to figure out how to make this space work best for me and how I like to craft. So I've got a few different zones within this space. I've got a filming slash storage area. This is my backdrop for all of my videos. Videos. Then I've got my crafting zone, which is where you see all of my overhead shots and my videos where I actually show you how to do the projects. Zone three is my actual office setup where I do editing and all of my administrative stuff with my business. And then at number four is organization and storage, which is in the closet. So in the spirit of keeping it totally real with you guys, this room was a disaster and it got worse before it got better. I had started moving stuff in and buying new things, but I hadn't really addressed the root cause and that was I couldn't find anything. And so I was buying more stuff. I was shoving it in my closet. And like, while this is embarrassing to share, I feel like it's very important to be totally frank because I feel like more people's rooms look like this. It's gonna look a lot more like mine than it is the end result at first. So I started by really organizing and sorting things. I took it day by day and I went through every bin of random stuff, whether it be from the move, from Christmas, whatever. Now I used a bunch of different bins to help me sort. So here I've got a trash bin. I've got a, this needs to go back to the garage bin. I've got a bin with all of my electrical cables and that helps me organize everything and start being real with yourself on what you need and don't need. Something I had to be real about was my vinyl. I kept things that I was actually gonna use and then I needed to either give to crafty friends or needed to just get rid of it because I just had way too much stuff. Then I really needed to get to a point where my closet was working better for me. So I did a lot of moving around and adding bins to the shelves to really figure out, okay, this process is gonna work. Now we can start putting items in containers and labeling them. For me, it not only helps to have labels on containers to be able to find things in the first place, but I also need a reminder of where things go to put it back. If not, if it takes me too long, I'm just gonna throw it in my closet if I'm being honest with you. And so by having things like this vinyl rolls label or these other ones saying, this is where all of your blank apparel goes, that really helps me to put things away and keep this up. I tried to not buy a ton of additional containers. So some of these might not be the perfect thing for them. Like I'm not the home edit over here, but I am just trying to get systems that work for me, a person that is not a crazy, super great organizer, but I'm trying to make this work for me. And I think that's the theme throughout the whole thing. Find systems that work for you. And here's a great example. I didn't want the front to be too busy of this, but I wanted to make sure that I could know what was in each drawer. So I added the label to the little lip and it really accomplished what I needed. I also wanted to utilize some more of my wall space. So I got this bulletin board from Target. It was really pretty and I thought it really matched the overall look of my office. So I was able to put up letters from my friends like Courtney and Jennifer and Shannon and I've got one from Jamie and Wendy and Auntie Cuckoo, Val and just all of these people that have sent me awesome letters for the mystery box. I've also been able to add some additional fun pieces, mementos from our trip, and it really helped really warm up the space and make it feel more like mine. I also decided to add two industrial shelves that I got from Menards above my craft space for a mixture of decor as well as helping organize my items. I made sure to install it right into the studs and it was a pretty easy process. So now I've got one with trip mementos and things with my YouTube friends. And then I also have this one, which is a mixture of organization and decor. I also wanted to utilize the back of the door leading into my craft room. So I grabbed this over the door vinyl organizer from Amazon. And this would be awesome, especially if you don't have a craft space, because this would fit really well in a guest bedroom or even in your hall closet to organize all of your vinyl. 
Now with the nature of a craft room, I'm sure there's some things in here that you see that you may want to check out. So I've done a ton of legwork on the back end, grabbing links for everything that I can. Now, if you have a hard time finding that link, if you are on your desktop, this is how you're going to do it. You are going to be watching the video and then you're just going to go down to the little box down here, open it up and there will be a link right there. If you are on your phone instead, be sure to click the little more next to the information underneath the title of the video. And that is going to expand the description box. For some reason, the app makes it a lot more difficult to find the link. So if you've had a hard time finding that stuff before, that is how you find it. So here's one final look at the before. This is the room when we moved in right after we just added new carpet and paint. And here it is now. So we're going to start in the closet because that is where a lot of my actual supplies are and that is where I put a lot of my organization and decluttering to work. So first on this left hand side I've got a ton of different types of bins. It's not super aesthetic but they're different bins that I have purchased over the years that I've had craft supplies in. I use some of these file folders for things like my model magic as well as glitter and then my can of stain that you see there. I also have things like party and wrapping and I use the font lemon milk because I liked that it was a block font versus like a handwriting script. It really helps my brain compute this as I'm looking at all the labels to be like there's my glitter I need to get it or there's my model magic I need to get it versus trying to read a script fancy font or things in different colors. That's why I went with the black. Some of my favorite containers that I've had for years, and I purchased a couple more for this makeover, are these from Michaels. They are the Simply Tidy brand, and they have thinner 12 by 12 ones that are great for like cardstock, and then they have thicker ones like this that I am using for apparel. I really like that once you open the lid, it is deeper so I can fold up t-shirts, put it in there, and everything will stay. And then in the container below, I've got all of my back stock of paint. I've got some paint out in the room, which you'll see in a little bit, but this is stuff I don't use all the time, so I keep it hidden here in the closet. Now this might be something specific to me because I do create content, but I have found this to be a game changer. I have a specific bin just for items that I am done making. The video is over, but I don't have a specific spot for it in my house yet. So I take it and I put it in this bin and then when it gets full, like it has been here, I can go through and figure out, okay, am I gifting something? Am I donating something? Am I putting it away for next year? It really helps me keep myself on track. These hanging file folder bins came from Target and they were very inexpensive. I've got hanging files in the bottom one for my receipts for my business. And then for the top one, I used hanging files as well as just some regular file folders to organize all of my scrap adhesive and HTV vinyl. So on each of the different folders, I put color strips just of the scraps so that I can go, okay, here's where my green scraps are. And it has really helped me find my vinyl so much quicker and it takes up so much less space than my pile that I had before. Another thing I wanted to make sure to do is not try to get overly engineered on organizing things. So up here, these large wood blanks and things like yarn, I'm just setting things in the container. I'm not worried about fully organizing things because this yarn is really not something that is going to stay organized. So I've got it tossed in the bin. I can see what colors are in there. I also have a container for things that are non-wood blanks like cups and plates and things like that. I also repurposed this container that I had for my Cricut supplies. I ended up putting faux florals in it and it's thick enough that I can just set them in there and see what I have. Another something that was really important for me to have was this items to sort container that allows me to take everything that I purchase and put it in there so that I know it's an upcoming video or content. Like for example, this bag is full of dinosaur birthday stuff for Finn's party coming up in March. So I bought it, I put it in there, I know what's coming up in videos and I can sort it based on what I need. So then that way I have a spot for it in the closet. I'm not just shoving it in there. Having a spot for everything will really help me. These two containers on the bottom have also been really helpful. This is a larger version of the Michaels cart. And what I did is I installed the bottom two pieces upside down. So then that way it acted more as a shelf instead of like a bin that it would sit in. So I've got my laminator and my sublimation printer, which I don't use a ton, a ton. So I wanted to have it out so I could easily grab it and use it, but it doesn't need to be out like my other printer. And then this is also great because it fits a full size Cricut inside of the little bin, I guess. So it's down in there. 
Now on top of this ribbon thing, which I'll get through in a second, I just have all my wood blanks. These are random Target containers I thought I needed, so I bought them and then I was determined to use them in the space because I had bought them. So I've just got all of my different wood blanks in here and then also burlap and trim just because the burlap rolls were a little too big for this thing down here. So then coming down to this ribbon organizer, it's actually a shoe rack from Amazon. And I saw this on TikTok from the creator Barefoot and Freckled. It's got this topper on it that acts as a table. So I got all my blanks on the top like I showed. And then at the bottom, it's got lips on all of the sides. So your ribbon's not going to fall out, but you can put it at an angle so you can see everything that you've got. So some of them I had to do horizontally. Some of them I did vertically, but this is huge because I can look at it and say, you don't have to go get Valentine's Day ribbon because it's there. Or if I think, oh, I don't have patriotic ribbon. Yes, you totally do. You can totally see it. And so this is going to be a game changer when it comes to not overbuying. And now moving over to the right hand side of my closet, I like to put my ring light and my tripod in there when it's not in use so I can shut the curtains and get it out of the way. And I also like to store my big MDF panel in here. It's double sided. So one side is lighter, one side is darker, and I can either put it on top of a table or a desk or just lay it right on the floor and it helps with flat lays. So I can shoot over the top at the projects that I've created, it makes it really easy to do. And then I just put it in the closet to keep it out of the way. Now this side's got a lot of bins, so here's a quick overview. That top shelf has got some empty containers in it, as well as my things that I don't want Finn to get into, like Armor Etch, Citrus Strip, and my Miter Box. It takes me to get on my tiptoes to get up there, so I want to make sure that he's not going to get into anything. He does not play in my craft room and the door stays shut, but for safety reasons, I just like to be extra, extra careful. Underneath that, I just added a piece of wood to create an additional shelf because I didn't have a shelf like this, so I'm trying to be resourceful. I probably will go get a wire shelf or we'll do wood shelves in general, but I use this to hold a lot of Dollar Tree containers. So I've got this one for clips, Cricut stuff, and also floral wire. And then if you move to the right, I've got these really fun Dollar Tree containers. These are my favorite containers from Dollar Tree. I get them every year when it's back to school time. They come in a variety of different colors, but the latch is super high quality and it's nice to store a lot of these small little trinkety type items and they take vinyl really nice. So I've got my stickers on there. So everything is organized. So I know where everything from glue down to stamps and ink, pipe cleaner, etc. To the right, I also have some more Dollar Tree containers for pom-poms, ornaments, and tags, and wood beads as well. I know right where it is. I can see it, take it out, put it right back. You may recognize my HTV Rant Auto Press. I love this thing. I just don't have a space in my room to like leave it out, which is fine. I don't use it all the time, but I do use it for sublimation, and it's much cheaper than the Cricut Auto Press. So I will link it down below on Amazon if you're interested in checking that out. Stacked on top of that, I've got some containers of vinyl rolls, and these are just some ornament containers that I bought by accident, but I ended up using them because I love the height. You can put the vinyl rolls right in there, see what's inside, and these are some of my more used ones that I didn't think needed to go behind the door. Then right next to it, I'm continuing on my kind of Cricut Command Center. I've got three containers that I had in my house. These are from Costco originally. I've got my top used vinyl, which is matte white, matte black adhesive, and then some HTV ones. I also have a container with my most used transfer tape so I can easily find it, as well as some of my favorite blanks from Dollar Tree that are fabric. So I've got them all in there. I can grab and go really easily. And all of that is stored on top of this kind of Ikea looking dupe. I got mine from Amazon and I use this in my old house because I crafted out of my dining room, but now I'm using it just to hold up that heat press. And then I did that same ledge labeling technique for paint markers and screen printing ink and all these things all the way down. I've got some Dollar Tree items helping me organize my paint markers, like these little marker containers. And then I also have a little like snap container that I've got my randoms in to help keep that drawer organized. Now to the right of that, I've got another cube organizer and this is probably the most unorganized section, but it works for me. I've got three tubs and right now it's Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day and general slash Easter. This is how I organize the items that I purchase for videos. So then when I'm ready to create St. Patrick's Day content or whatever, I grab that and I'm good to go. Now this side is where all of my heavy hitter used a lot supplies are and it's nice and colorful and I like that it looks like that now that it's organized. 
So to the left here, I used these containers from Amazon. They're actually for a pantry, but they work really well for my sticker and magnet supplies, as well as my smart card stock. Because all you need to do is pull it out from the shelf. I can see everything that's in there, and then I just slide it right back in. So I bought these in a pack of two from Amazon, and this works really well, especially for the smart materials that are a little bit bigger than your 12 by 12. I'm also using some more of those larger containers from Michaels to organize things like adhesive vinyl, which these are my sheets, not my rolls. I also have fabric organized by color in there. And then I also organized my felt by color. My heavier Cricut felt is on the bottom, as you can see, and then my lighter pieces are on top. I also use some of the open vertical space at the top to have some extra large piece of fabric, this pillow insert, and just things that don't need to necessarily go on a shelf. And then to the right, honestly, this is a hodgepodge catch-all, but I've got some of my spackling, I've got some extra pieces, and then my little Teflon sheets that I use for heat transfer vinyl. Not the most organized, but I know where those random things are to use. And then I've got a ton of those 12 by 12 Michaels containers to organize things like my embroidery supplies, letter size cardstock, regular cardstock, pattern cardstock, iron on vinyl, and my Cricut materials. It's so nice because I can go over, see exactly what's in each container, pull it out, use it, and then put the whole container back. This is also where I'm leaving some of my backstock Cricut stuff, like my roll holder for my Maker 3, as well as some additional mats that I don't need to have out in my craft room. Going up one shelf, I've got my sublimation stuff and another one of those Michaels containers. If you take anything away from this video, it's that these containers are amazing for both craft rooms as well as kids' toys. I know we're not talking about that today, but I have a ton of Finn's toys in these containers too. And then on that tippy top shelf, another one I got to get on my tiptoes for, I've got cling and seal as well as parchment paper. And then these awesome card organizers that I got at Michael's as well. I really like Michael's organizational stuff, especially for craft spaces. I know people like Ikea, but Michael's is like two minutes from my house. So that's why I usually do that. But this thing's awesome. I made a bunch of little labels on my Cricut Joy. And then I have all of my cards that I have a collection of in the box. I like to buy greeting cards every time I go to Trader Joe's because they're cheap and super cute. I do the same thing with Dollar Tree. So now I have them all organized. And the other day was my grandma's birthday. So I just bop in, grab the card, fill it out. Good to go. Now, even though this is all organized, I also like the option to close the shades when I can. And I do need to find some more like creative craft room vibey drapes. I need to look for that. I'll probably put some of those on the window outside as well, but that is a TBD work in progress. These were just left with the house and I ended up just cleaning them and putting them back up. And then right outside of the closet, I have my little Cricut Joy cart. And this is awesome because I can take this to any room of the house, Finn's room or the kitchen or whatever, and use it as a command station for my Cricut to make labels or whatnot. So this is a Michaels cart that I have tricked out with all of their simple tidy items. I already had the cart as well as the wood lid on the top, but then I added some of these cups for pens. I also added this divider inside one of the shelves. So then that way I could organize all of my little Cricut things. I got a paper towel roll arm, but I'm using it for my small six inch rolls of transfer tape. And I usually store my cables underneath to give it a clean look. I also love this pegboard system. In the set, you get two squares that you can just clip right onto the outside of the cart. And then I used a mixture of Michaels and Dollar Tree pegboard accessories to organize my Cricut Joy items. Now that is a Dollar Tree Cricut mat that I have hanging there. I just popped a hole in it so I could hang it up. And then I use some of these other hangers to hang a variety of different tools. So this is awesome if you don't have a craft room and especially if you have a Cricut Joy because it fits great on the top, you can use it, then wheel it around and it is a really great way to keep everything contained. So right as you walk in, it's nice because I have a lot of open space here in the center. It makes me feel like each zone is kind of spread out. So I've got my office set up to the left my craft space slash filming space. I've got some extra filming things. And then this is my storage slash filming backdrop. And this has been a while coming. If you watched my videos when we first moved in, it was literally like a sad little side table behind me. So this is definitely a much, much better better upgrade in my opinion. So these units in the center are just two six cube organizers from Target. I just went with the Target ones. You can get cube organizers anywhere, but I really did like this brown color. It's nice when I go to stage stuff to get 
footage shots and it's just personal preference. Also, this you have to order online. My stores local to me in Illinois don't carry this color, but I really do like them. And I also like these large bins that I also got from Target. Those are nice for storage, but it also gives a really nice pop of color to the room, which is super nice because I was getting like very uninspired with a lot of the neutrals in here. So the pops of color really helped. So to the right here, I've got a white like tower thing. I bought it for the old house from Michaels. And originally I had two of them with a desktop, but this works nice because it gives me storage on either side. This top unit is separate from the bottom, but this is nice because it holds my larger Cricut heat press, which is nice. And then I just have some like winter stuff right now for decor up there. I also really love this light up like clock and this is nice because it is an alarm clock but i like having something with just the time it helps keep me on task when i am working in here so it's nice to have that and then also my computer and my phone if i need it then these drawers i really like to use for just things that will fix they're not very deep so i did stationary just so then that way i knew what was in the drawers but i didn't have to have something out on the front especially for this one because if i'm filming like if you look at it straight on you can't really see the labels but if you come up over the top of it you can see what's in each drawer like stickers and I also have my Canon selfie printer in here and the paper that goes with it, shipping supplies, and then also pens and markers. And so it's really nice to have that all labeled, but you don't have to have like a sticker on the front because I thought that would be a little too busy for my filming background. And as far as overall decor, I wanted to add some color and really brighten it up. So I found these fun felt garlands on super clearance from Christmas. I hooked them with some command strips to either side and draped it across. It's great for the filming backdrop, but it's also nice to add some color and creativity to the space. And I like the way that I hooked them because all I have to do is easily slide them off and I can switch them out for other garlands to either stage or decorate like I did for my recent Valentine's Day video. Across the top, I've got a variety of things that I've purchased as well as made to help it feel like my own. I've got some olive branches to add some warmth in there. I've got this sign with my kind of pseudo logo. I've got a lot of different pieces of decor that speak to self-care and mental health and things like that. Um, because being totally realistic, what we do for a job while amazing is also sometimes hard on me mentally. And so I want to try to keep all of the creative juices flowing and keep my mind open and positive to help continue to create for you guys. So not been very bashful about sharing my struggles with mental health here, but that's why I like to have that. I also raised some of my items that I put into jars to act as decor as well as storage. I did some makeup sponges as well as these foam brushes to really kind of set off that backdrop. And then I used this fun clearance vase I found to display my Cricut felt flowers. I made a whole video on how to make these. So if you're interested, I will link it down below. One of the greatest things I wanted to make sure to do with this room is not fill every nook and cranny because I know right now I'm not in the heart of busy season and I'm also gonna get more stuff. So only two of these bins have stuff in them. Like this one has some different items for filming like lights and cables, but the rest of them are empty, which is really nice because then I can grow and expand. Across the top, I used some of my Cricut items as decor as well for a backdrop. So my smaller Easy Press, as well as this Viver mug press. I had another mug press. I wasn't a huge fan of it, so I got rid of it. And I've had some other crafty friends tell me to check this one out. I also have got my small little press. And then rounding out this cube organizer, I've got this little spice rack. It's acrylic from Target. And I use that to display all of my different colors of chalk paint. So A, I can easily find them, but B, it adds some nice color to the space. Now this rack to the left of my cube organizer has been a game changer. I got it from Amazon and it is the perfect size to hold printers or crickets. So I've got multiple crickets. You guys know I do a lot of different projects. And so this has helped me keep it out and usable without having it be in the way. So it fits my Cricut Maker 3 on the top. I've got a Cricut Explore 2 with the dust cover on the center. And then I also have my Epson photo printer on the bottom. What I like about this is I've got an outlet right here. So all I have to do is just 
use my 12 by 12 mat, or I can also pull it out and use my 12 by 20 format to cut there, which is super nice and convenient. And then I also added a little command picture hanging strip there to hang a standard grip, light grip, heavy grip, and a 12 by 20 format. Those are my most used. So all I have to do is grab those and go ahead and use them. I have some Cricut branded mats and then I have some from other brands off of Amazon that I have tried and a lot of them work just fine. So I've got a variety of whichever ones are clean at that moment. Also above that, I've got a wreath hung and I've got my Backstreet Boys sign on it right now. This is nice to add color, but it's also great for me to stage some of my items here to show you guys. So when you see this, you know that I'm up in my craft room. I also really wanted a variety of craft themed decor, but when I looked around, I couldn't find anything I wanted. So as we do as DIYers, I made my own. This handmade all day sign was a Reach It Dollar Tree DIY, so I will link that video for you. So I like to keep my desk kind of out because I'll either put it in front of me when I'm filming, especially if I'm doing like an unboxing or something, I have a surface that I can use, but I also just then push it over here underneath the window just out of the way. So I have that nice big middle space. Same thing with the chair next to it. I use that to film and I recently made this cute little peace, love and crafting pillow with a file and some stuff from my Expressions Vinyl January mystery project box. But this chair was nice. I got it on liquidation so it is actually a target chair but I got it from a liquidation seller so I got it cheaper than it normally was. I also love the coloration of the top of this desk. It's great for flat lays. I put stuff down and that is how I style a lot of my items for videos. So then as we come around to the other side of the window, this is more of my like get things done side of the room. So I have this desk over here, which is where I do all of my projects for the most part. You may see me working on that desk for a little bit you know, to kind of switch up any type of angle. But this for the most part is where it's at. The best part about this desk is that my parents had it in their basement. They were gonna get rid of it. So I decided to use it. It's great and sturdy. And again, it's not about aesthetics for me. I just want stuff that works. I want my room to be cute, but I'm not gonna spend a ton of money to make that happen. And then a little hack that I did is I added this MDF panel to the top so that I have more of a rustic look versus this orangey top of the desk. I just lay it over the top. I add my filming stuff. And then that is what you see when you guys are watching me craft. Now, speaking of filming stuff, I use this glide gear rig. It helps my camera sit right above my hand so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I got to give a shout out to Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. I'm pretty sure there's probably like 10 of us YouTubers that she got turned on to this thing. It's awesome. You can hook your lights right onto it. So if you are a creator and you're looking for something like this, it is a great investment. So I will link this down below if you are interested in something like that. Also, my shelves that I shared about earlier, I put them up and I've got my YouTube side. So I've got a variety of mementos from trips, like these little ornaments that I made from our Boston and Colorado trips. I've got a photo of all of us at Dollar Tree this last year and then my little AJ McLean that Shannon gave me when her Bethany and I went to Backstreet Boys this summer. A sweet subscriber named Norma sent us all these fun framed pictures of our Boston trip. I've got a bottle that I popped when I hit 100k and then on the other side it's a little more functional. I've got a container with some glue sticks as well as some wood beads and then I've got some pens, a little reminder. Like I said I love those signs. And then to the right, so things aren't out of reach, I've got my most used supplies, things like paint and hot glue, just so it's not too far from me. So between my desk and the white thing, I've got my little paint pads, little cutting mats, so I can get those out when needed. And then I went ahead and labeled all of the drawers the same way that I did before. Now this paint organizer that's on top, I really like. I just got from Michaels. I put everything in backwards so I can see the colors and I went ahead and sorted it from like the rainbow Roy G. Biv order. So then that way I can find things really easy. It's nice to twist it, get out what you need and put it back. I also realized that I have a ton of weeding hooks, even a silhouette hook. Yes, if you are eagle-eyed, you'll see that. I do use that from time to time and I do like it. And then I also have another sign, you're worthy of every good thing. That's one of my SVGs. And then to the left, I've got some more little scrapers for Cricut projects because I use those all the time. In the drawers, I've got things like my hot glue guns, glue sticks, items to paint, including extra paper plates for paint. I've got my little desk vacuum that makes it easy to clean up messes. And then I've also got some sandpaper and things underneath there. 
in the drawers of my desk, I went ahead and used some Dollar Tree little containers to organize everything. And this is going to vary by crafter and the different types of things that you do. But I always have to have my measurement tool. I've got my slide cutters, wood glue, transfer tape. And then in the bottom, I've got all of my fun little like tin snips and miter shears and staple guns, specialty cutters, hole punchers, wood tools, so that I can easily find all of that when I need it. Then I think my biggest splurge for this room was my desk and my chair. And when I sit and edit for hours on end, I want to make sure that I'm comfortable. So I got this desk from Flexi Spot where it will raise and lower so I can stand fully up. And I'm 5'11, so that's a big thing to say, but I can rise it all the way up and be able to stand there and work, or I can sit at that comfortable chair that I got from Wayfair. And I've wanted one of these for a while. I did a lot of research and I ended up going with this Flexi Spot one, mainly because I really liked the wood veneer on the top. It's not real wood, but it looks like it is. And then I also really liked that it was one solid piece and it was deep enough for all of my stuff. So I've got my monitor and everything here, and then I still have space between my front of my table and my keyboard so that I can write notes or do whatever here. I also decided to forego a desktop computer because I already had a laptop. So I went ahead and bought this LG monitor for about, I think 130 bucks at Costco, which was cheaper than buying a whole new computer. And then I just unplug my laptop and can run with it. I also added to my setup this light that I also use for filming, but this is nice for Zoom calls because I can just turn it on. You can do brightness, lower it, and then you can also do three different warmness, warm or cool lights, which is nice as well. Um, even with the sunlight, like you see on this day, I just need a little bit of extra light so folks can see me. So I just clipped it onto my stand, called it a day. This monitor stand, as well as this organizer over here, both came from Target. I liked the unfinished wood look in contrast to my dark wood table. Also under the monitor stand, I have an Epson receipt scanner. If you've got a creative business, this thing is awesome. I got it on Amazon and it just, yoop, 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 you send through your receipts and it is awesome. I also have my little Amazon doohickey. I won't say her name because it'll probably turn mine on and yours on at your house, but it is nice to have one of these in a craft room, whether it be one with a screen or not, because you can literally just say like, turn on this podcast, play this video, turn on this. And it has been really nice to do that hands-free. One of my biggest things I didn't have at the old house was a place I could leave my printer out. So when I need to print something quick, it's just out. So this is my HP desk chat 3752. I talk about it all the time. It's on top of another six cube organizer with some additional little trinkets and photos. And it's right underneath that bulletin board I put up earlier with all of the cards from my friends that I've gotten through my YouTube days. I really like this corner because I've got everything here that I need at my desk and I also have a hidden little bin secret that they're all my snacks for when I'm crafting. The last thing I wanted to add was some garlands up above to add a little bit more color to this corner of my office. And then I also added this whiskey and wit sign, which was the first thing I made when I was doing my wood sign business and it's kind of where it all started. So I thought that would be fitting to have it above my desk. That's gonna do it for this video. I am so happy that I was finally able to give you a tour around this craft space and kind of give you a look behind the curtain of what this room looks like behind the lens when you're looking at me like this, what's going on all around. I hope you're able to find some tips and tricks that you can apply to your craft room, craft space, craft area, whatever you have. You definitely don't have to have a craft room to keep things organized because I have not had one for a long time. So it is a work in progress and always remember to just try to get rid of things if you're craft hoarder like me decluttering is one of the biggest parts that will make you get to this point and go <sighs> thanks so much for watching if you're new be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future video and i will catch you guys in the next one bye